Hey guys, my name's Kara. I'm with Craft County today, and I love cats. So I will be teaching you a little bit about embroidery. Um, people who like to embroider also often like cats. That seems to go hand in hand. So this is our first video. We're super excited about it. Um, and I'm super excited to pass on a little bit of knowledge about needlepoint craft. Um, embroidery is great for beginners. A uh, little bit more user friendly than sewing. Uh, you don't have to have a machine. All you need is a little bit of thread and some needles um, and your favorite fabric and you'd be good to go. So any great work of art starts with a great idea or pattern or template and embroidery really isn't any different. You can use your favorite logo, your favorite floral design, um, your favorite cat pattern. You can use any of that to start as well as your favorite fabric. Um, cotton is usually a preferred fabric um, just because it's ease of use, uh, even weaving. Uh, here today we have just a very basic 28 count, 60% uh, cotton, 40% poly uh, fabric. Uh, you can find it basically any craft store. Uh, so 28 count just basically means it's 28 threads per inch. Uh, it's super easy to count off your stitches as you're going. Uh, so you can kind of keep track and make it as even as possible as you start out. We'll go ahead and start with our template. The other thing that's kind of nice about this fabric is that it is fairly transparent. So when you do lay your pattern underneath, you should be able to see it for tracing. Uh, there's several different methods for tracing. You can use carbon paper, uh, you can use a water soluble pencil or marker, kind of like for sewing or quilting. Uh, today we're just going to use a standard pencil and uh, trace out the pattern. So now that our pattern is completed, uh, we can move on to the next step. So you want to find the hoop of your choice. Um, Hoops range anywhere from itty bitty two inch adorable little mini hoops uh, to these awesome 12 inch hoops um, that are perfect for things like tutorials. Um, so we can start lining up our hoop and our pattern here. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have about an inch to an inch and a half of overhang all the way around. Uh, so if you're using scrap fabric, quilting fabric, anything like that, just to make sure you give yourself a little bit of breathing room. So how you work a hoop, because um, I was not aware quite how that worked before I started here. Uh, you want to lay your fabric over the inner hoop. So there's the inner hoop and the outer hoop. You want to place the inner hoop underneath your fabric and try and center it the best you can. Um, and then what you want to do, you want to place your outer hoop over there. And you want it to be just a little tight still. You don't want to loosen it too much because um, you're going to want it tight to start off with so you can pull it a little bit more as you get it on there. Um, so it should start to look a little bit something like that. So then you want to start kind of pulling your fabric a little bit more just so you get that nice and taut across there. Um, ideally, you probably would have wanted to iron this one out just so we didn't have any creases, but you can easily pull most of that out as you go. Now that we have our fabric all tightened down and we're just about ready to start uh, our needle point, you want to trim your fabric about an inch and a half, again, away from the edge here. Uh, just so it's a little bit easier to hold and work with while you're while you're embroidering. Now that we have our excess material cut off, we're actually ready to get started. So an important part of embroidery is obviously the thread. So a few thread basics. Um, embroidery thread has uh, six different individual strands in it. So true embroidery thread, you can actually pull the strands away from each other so that you have uh, little, little individual strands like this. Uh, 
Most embroidery uh, uses anywhere from three to six strands. Um, if you're getting very finely detailed with it, you can use one strand, two strands, whatever you really want for your design. So for this tutorial, I'm actually going to use all six strands, um, just so you're able to see the texture and length of stitches on the fabric here. Um, otherwise, most embroidery designs use about three threads uh, for, for standard embroidery. So today we're going to be using uh, two of the same size needles. I'm going to be using a number five embroidery needle. Uh, so when you're looking at needle sizing, uh, what you're looking at typically uh, in American sizes, this pack is five to 10. So if you're looking at size five to 10, you're probably wondering, what does that even mean? Um, so in a multi-pack like this, it would actually be working. So fives would be your middle needles. So the first number is always gonna be that middle middle needle size working out from there. So this actually has five different sizes in it. Uh, the number five, uh, so with needles too, uh, the smaller the number is, uh, the larger the needle actually is. Uh, so what you would be looking at, um, five would actually be the largest and comfortably fits three to six threads within that needle eye. So another thing about embroidery thread, you can typically put it on a spool, so it's a little bit easier to work with. But if you don't have one handy, um, you can always just pull it right out from the skein just like that. Um, so as far as the length of thread that you would want um, for a lettering design like this, you'd probably just wanna pull it out. A good way to measure would be from the tips of your fingers as you pull it out just back to your, your armpit. Um, so you would wanna cut that off and just start threading it. So now that you have your needle threaded, another important part about embroidery that's different than just say hand sewing, you want to leave this little tail about a couple inches off to the side. That's just going to go right through as you embroider. Um, but for stability, there's a couple different ways you can like tie off your threads or finish a stitch. A good way to start is just to make a couple knots within your thread, um, just right at the end, and then you're ready to start your design. So for my first letter here, um, I will be using a running stitch. And a running stitch is a super basic uh, type of stitch. So what you're gonna end up doing is coming up through your fabric. And you typically wanna start from the back just as you're, you're starting out here. And for the running stitch, you wanna try and make these as even as possible. So this is where counting off your fabric can actually be helpful. Um, so if you're taking a look, uh, you can count one, two, let's go with three. We'll just go with three little threads over. Pull that through. Make sure it's nice and tight in the back. And then you want to do an even stitch from there. So you would want to count another three spaces over or just try and guesstimate and get it as close to the same length as possible and come back up through there. So we're just going to continue on going about three stitches over and then coming up from the back three stitches away. So here is our completed running stitch. Um, again, it's a great stitch to start off with just so you get familiar with counting off your fabric um, and how the needle and thread goes through your fabric. So after you've completed this beautiful running stitch, you might be asking yourself, what do I do with all of this excess thread? Well, I'll tell you, there really isn't a right or a wrong way to get rid of it. Um, a lot of times people will just weave back through a few of the stitches that they did previously uh, and then tie it off. Um, you can even opt to just cut it off right there and knot it like you would hand sewing. Um, but I am going to weave back through a couple of those running stitches uh, and then just make a knot. So you wanna run that back under and then just loop it through in an overhand knot. and then you're free to cut that off. So 
So for my letter R, I am choosing to be a bit ambitious and do a cross stitch. Um, and for the cross stitch, it's always a good idea just to kind of sketch out um, where that cross stitch is going to lay. So I'm just going to sketch that out here quick. It's just a pretty simple outline. So now that we have our outline ready, we can just get right into cross stitching. You start from the back, just like you did with your running stitch. So for cross stitching, it's very helpful to mark your dots in a four square pattern, just so you're able to get them as even as possible. You're going to be lacing your thread across each of those squares. So I'll just go ahead and line those up here. So once you have your dots all plotted out, now you can get cross stitching. So we'll just start by going diagonal from the first stitch that you did. And then you're actually going to go back and go back to the dot that's right next to the first one. And then cross back over. And there you have your first cross stitch. Pretty simple stuff. Um, we're not trying to complicate anything today, um, but now it will be your first try at coming back through one of the holes you have already embroidered through. So you can start at either side. Um, you wanna start at the side farthest away from where you just completed. So you come back up through there and cross over. And then one more time, you want to come back to your first cross and cross over one more time. And then you just want to keep going at that pace um, and you should have yourself a beautiful cross stitched letter R. So here is our completed R. Um, it's not perfect by any means, uh, but we are going to go back over this with another stitch uh, and that's actually a really good example of how embroidery is very forgiving. Still is going to look cute when it's finished. So here is our cross stitch. So I'm going to start on my letter A and that is going to be what is called a stem stitch. So you want to start at your lowest point on the on the letter. You're going to do a stitch length that's about the same as your running stitch. So I'm going to go with about three. And as you come back from the bottom uh, to start the stem stitch, you actually want to come up about halfway through right next to your previous stitch. And then make another three stitch length. and just keep repeating that process. So here's our finished stem stitch. Uh, you can see that that does work really well for straight lines, uh, lettering. Um, you can also use that, weirdly enough, for the stems of flowers on a lot of floral designs. Um, so now we'll move on to our next stitch. So our next stitch is going to be a blanket stitch and typically it's used for the edges of blankets. So for this tutorial we're actually going to just use it to show on the F here. Um, again it does work really nice as a straight line stitch but you want to kind of plan it out or sketch it out before you start. So I'll go ahead and mark that off and show you how to do that. So I've started on a blanket stitch here for my letter F, uh, but I did want to just show you kind of the finished product just so you know what the desired effect is. 
So you want to start by coming up through the back of your fabric and going about, we're going to say, three stitches over. Again, you can kind of pick and choose uh, what size stitch you want. But before you pull that all the way through like you would for a running stitch or other stitches, you want to just leave a loop loose up at the top. Then you want to come through the bottom of the grid that you drew, come up through the top, and then go through that loop, making sure to pull up towards the top so that you don't get those crossed down over. If you pull towards the bottom, it's actually going to turn that thread and the stitch, and that's not going to turn out how you want it to. So for the last letter in craft, we are going to do a chain stitch. And a chain stitch uh, works, again, really well for lettering, um, for floral prints, uh, for borders. Uh, again, just a really great basic universal stitch. So what you're going to want to do when you come through the back, you're going to want to hold your thread up and away and put your needle in about one space over from the hole you just came through. And then just get your needle up about three stitches. And before you pull your needle through, you're going to want to just loop that fabric right around the needle. and continue pushing the needle through. And as you pull, that's going to create a lovely little chain. And you don't want to pull it too tight or else it will pull back. So you can kind of play around with the distance and width of your chain stitch. So there we have our finished chain stitch. So we've gotten about three-fourths of the way through our first word here. We're actually going to be breaking this video into two separate parts so that it's a little easier for you to follow along with. Uh, for our second half of Craft County, we're actually going to be learning uh, several different types of back stitches, which are extremely important to embroidery. So I hope you guys are enjoying uh, this intro to embroidery. Uh, these stitches, again, are just super important bases to any project. You can really build off of these and create really whatever you want from them. So I hope this video has inspired you to get out and get crafting. Until next time.